I see water as a conduit for thinking, for ideas and for practice. So I dissolve pigment in water, I dissolve paint in water, I dance on water, I splash water around, I impress objects and materials in water and I'm constantly sort of my hands and my body and my feet are in and out of water when I'm making work. So One Year People, our cultural language group is uh, known as Running Water People and I know that I think very deeply in water. Um, Della Prasoli talks about how water makes you go deeper. It's something about being immersed in water when you're, you've got your ears under the water and it's suddenly there's a, a thrumming or a sort of a different um, sonic residue that you can sort of feel like you're in another world. I did train in printmaking and I still go back to it again and again. I think it's one of the best sources of en engagement that artists should be involved in because it teaches you about registration, layering, ways of applying and then sort of um, erasing material and it really focuses the, and um, makes you think about planning your work. So for me it's been a really important source of looking at how I arrange things or almost like choreograph the shapes or the forms and I use it a lot in public art as well and being able to go from something quite small to something quite large is quite easy when you use that sort of way of uh, thinking. I I have worked with all sorts of printmaking but I really love lithography and in fact with lithography that was probably when I was first thinking about the idea of pooling washes in terms of using touche and water and working with limestone and the idea of grease and resistance, um, you know, gum arabic, all of those sorts of things, nitric acid are put into play and you get something, I think um, Michael Ondaatje talks about limestone being the reef of memory and I really love that idea of the residue and the idea that when you work with the material the grease goes onto the stone, the surface, and then it actually goes down through the pores of the stone. Sometimes when you erase the top surface the ghost of the old images comes through so it's a, it's a beautiful medium to work in. I've always been drawn to ancient sites all across the world, including Aboriginal Australia, where I'm from. And so I'll often look at the very earliest, perhaps sort of sense of occupation. I'm also interested in the geological, you know, scientific beginnings of, of places and things. Uh, when I was travelling back in 1987, I remember seeing a book called The Pelican History of the World and it started off and it told you what was the very first history of the place you were in and then the next layer and the next layer. And I think, like an archaeologist, I really like going through and filtering and finding out what those ancient uh, sources are. There's a place called the Church of San Clemente in Rome which you can go down into and to begin with you get a layer of more recent history and then you go down and becomes an early Christian church and then you go down again uh, and becomes a temple of Mithras and you keep going down and I really like to follow through those layers of history and culture everywhere I travel. A lot of times I will listen to the radio, I'll listen to podcasts, uh, music but just being really aware of the media as well and so when I was making the work the fires were ever present throughout places in Australia. Friends of mine had lost their houses, um, you know we had so much destruction of the environment, of animals and there was also a lot of talk about indigenous um, fire, you know sort of burning techniques and that translation of knowledge and perhaps it's time to actually look at best practice which sometimes is not what is occurring right now and so I think that 
that cultural shift. I don't know how present it will be now, now that the fires have sort of, a lot of them have dampened and gone out, and then we've had floods coming in. But I think that um, erasure of past practice is something that's very easy for, um, I think, politicians and developers and people who are looking at uh, a quick fix and, you know, um, the biggest gain and in terms of financial gains and not really looking at the sustainability of the environment.